Welcome to Inside New York City Dance, giving you an inside look at everything dance in New York City. We cover the hottest dance events, performances, resources, and everything that you can imagine that's for dancers and dance lovers in New York City. I'm your host, Ashani Mfuko, and we have an incredible show planned just for you today. You're going to come with me and get an inside look at Ailey 2's City Group Theater season here in New York City. I got to interview the artistic director, Sylvia Waters, who's been there for 38 years. Can you believe that? 38 years, appointed by Mr. Alvin Ailey himself. I got an intimate interview with her, talking about how she's feeling during her last season with the company, plus the new artistic director, Mr. Troy Powell, and two of the Ailey Two dancers. So get ready for that. And in the studio with me today is a very beautiful young woman who's sitting right behind me. She's a professional ballet dancer, and she dances for the Metropolitan Opera ballet as well as Exit 12 Dance Company, and that's Miss Taylor Gordon. So you're going to get to know what's it like to be a ballet dancer here in New York City. It's a little crazy, but she's going to tell us all about it, and it's going to be a great show. So first, I want to share with you my intimate interview with Sylvia Waters, Artistic Director of Ailey 2. 38 years, guys. Incredible. Check it out. Tell me about how you're feeling right now, knowing this is your last season. Uh, what what emotions are you feeling right now? Uh, it's difficult. It's a, it's a, it's a very mixed bag. I feel excited on one hand, you know. On the other hand, a, a little sad. Uh, but the the whole idea of renewal and uh, new adventures, new people, new life is very exciting to me. So um, as you move forward into the next phase, are you... Absolutely, absolutely, because the, it just gets better and better, you know? Um, as you move forward into this next phase of, of your career and of your life, um, how do you plan to keep dance and the Ailey uh, family incorporated into your life? Well, I hope they'll keep me incorporated <laughs> into their lives. Uh, I will be doing uh, a number of isolated projects, uh, a lot having to do with archives, uh, some having to do uh, working with uh, emerging choreographers still, but coming from another end. I would like to think that Ailey too will continue grooming you know, young artists to become the artists they knew they could be, I knew they could be, um, and choreographers. It's a very, um, it's a very fertile territory. Ashani and Fuko here at the Ailey Studios in New York City for Sylvia Waters' farewell cocktail reception. After 38 years, this is it. She said goodbye to us. How has Sylvia Waters' legacy influenced you as a dancer? You haven't danced for Ailey too, but she's influenced and inspired so many of us. So as being part of the Ailey organization, how has her legacy influenced you? To know her, to see her work on a day-to-day -day basis, to see the dancers that she's chosen, and to see how she's cultivated their talent, um, to see how generous she is in spirit, and how excited she is. And even when I joined the company, she didn't know me from, from Adam. Right. And how warm and welcoming she was um, to me really means a lot. People like her are angels. There are angels on earth. And um, I, I'm really inspired and um, just in awe of her. This is Alicia Graf Mack a member of the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. Sylvia Waters, we love you. Thank you for your work and all that you've done. And uh, we'll see you soon. And what a glorious, glorious journey. What a way to celebrate life. And as I, I mean, really, you're a sea of people out there to me right now. It's, and it, it's just, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's warm. It's this last tour I did with Ailey too. And to see each and every audience in each and every country come to their feet and to see these 
wonderful, beautiful young men and women, so engagingly and so honestly give of themselves. There, there were so many presenters that said, this never happened. This audience doesn't stand. This audience doesn't do that. But they did that. Graduated at 19 from Marymount Manhattan College here in New York City, and then by age 20, she had a master's in publishing from Pace University. Who does that? It's Taylor Gordon. <laughs> Hi, Taylor. Hi. Welcome back. Thank you for having Again, me. Again, welcome back, as in you've been on my radio show, just like yes. many of my guests here yes. on the TV show. <laughs> um, but it's great to have you. Great to be here. You're so busy. Yes. <laughs> I'm on Twitter all the time. I have a social media obsession, which most people <laughs> already know about. And every day, I can't even keep track. You're all over the place, it's girl. True. How, how are you balancing everything? Because you do Pilates. I teach you Pilates. Teach. I dance. Yeah, I have about, I think at one point I had nine different jobs around the city. Are you kidding me? Uh, nine total, including dancing stuff. And just oh working gosh. day and night and going working through school, taking as many classes as I could, and just auditioning, 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 and just constantly trying my best and seeking Not the sleeping. next. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I do have insomnia, so that, Oh my god. Yeah, well. <laughs> wow. But yeah, no, I love it. I feel like being in New York is the place to be as a dancer, and so I love I love the work and I love being here. Absolutely. So coming out of college and, and going through the audition process mm -hmm. to get started. What was that experience like? Because some people watching may be going through that mm -hmm. themselves or may have a child that's going through mm -hmm. that process. Like, is it scary and crazy? What's it like? You get used to it. It's frustrating at first because it's a lot of rejection, rejection over and over and over again. And then once in a while you hit that big thing. And for me, that was the Radio City Christmas show my yeah. first time. It was my, I was finishing my last semester of uh, grad school when I got that contract. And so it worked out timing wise just perfectly to transition into professional dancing and that was just it just made all those bad auditions worth it. Isn't it crazy? You have to go through like 10, exactly. 15 no's mm -hmm. before you get that one exactly. really good yes. Exactly. And I would say dancing at Radio City Music Hall for the Christmas Spectacular, that's pretty, pretty awesome. That's pretty, pretty awesome. good. That's a good yes. Exactly. To have. exactly. So from there, what was your path or kind of like how did you see your career going from there? Um, well, that was the, my first big, big thing in New York. Mm -hmm. um, and then it slowed down for a while. I was injured for a while, and I was just working with some small ballet companies. Um, and then continued to work with them, performing as much as I could, just saying mm -hmm. yes to everything I could possibly get, oh which I gosh. still do. <laughs> um, and then last spring, I auditioned for the Metropolitan Opera, probably for the fifth or sixth time. Different shows, but fifth or sixth time there. Big cattle call, same thing as Radio City, hundreds of people, mm -hmm. and then finally made it to the end of the audition, was offered a contract at the end of the day, and there I was. So. Incredible. Yeah. Congratulations Thank you. on that, by the way, because <laughs> you. that's something that most of us dancers dream of, those yeah. types of opportunities. It was definitely a dream come true. And I think what you said is important, that you had auditioned five mm -hmm. or six times mm -hmm. already. So. It's all about perseverance exactly. and persistence. Exactly. So you can't take the first or the second or the third right. or whatever, no, <laughs> Don't take and then no. quit and say, oh, I can't do it, you know, I'm over it, whatever. You exactly. have to keep pushing and pushing exactly. and pushing and not get discouraged. Exactly. So what has been your biggest challenge here as a ballerina mm -hmm. in New York City? Because there's so much competition. There's so much competition. I think for me, trying to balance work and dance, there's, mm. so, like I said, nine different jobs. So by the end of the day, you're exhausted. And to right push yourself to say, yes, I worked all day, I sat at a desk for nine hours, but I'm in New York, I'm working so that I can dance. I'm not right. here to just work. So at the end of the day, after nine hours, I'm exhausted, but I still make myself go take class if I can. So oh that's that extra step that I think a lot of people get stuck. Sometimes you have to make money in New York, so you Absolutely. may get stuck in a job and then you end up either leaving New York or stopping dancing altogether because there's just no time to keep pushing for it. Mm -hmm. And so for me, you know, dance is number one always and will Wonderful. be. So, And that's why you've been so successful. I hope at, so. <laughs> at such a young age, you've been so successful. And I know, you know, for people who move here and are like, oh my gosh, it's so expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to pay rent, I have to pay bills, I have to work. Yes. But I need to be taking classes mm -hmm. and I need to be going to auditions. Like, it's a very difficult balance mm -hmm. that you have to find. And exactly. everyone finds it differently. Some yes. people, like myself, teach right. a lot. Mm -hmm. Or you get your nine to five job right. and then you dance after or whatever right. you do. But you have to figure out a way to make right. it work. And I think if you're determined, mm -hmm. 
and you know you say to yourself I'm not gonna give up exactly. I'm gonna push through no matter what mm -hmm. then you can make it happen exactly so I mean I'm so impressed by you <laughs> because I feel like you know at such a young age how have you how have you made it this far but it mm. comes from hard work yeah so you're dancing now with the Metropolitan Opera mm. Ballet just what has that season been like for you it was amazing I actually just finished uh, a couple weeks ago but mm. it was a month solid of rehearsals and then performing. Uh, it was Menal, the new production of Menal, French opera wow. at the Met. And it was just amazing. We had full tutus and point shoes, center stage. And Who doesn't love, what, what girl <laughs> doesn't love a beautiful tutu? It's true, I mean, it's it's, it doesn't get old. I don't it's care how old you are. I mean, it's <laughs> fabulous. Yeah. That's the glamorous part of it. It's true. Exactly. Yeah. That, <laughs> the onstage part is very glamorous. Backstage, not so much. Mm -hmm. Even just literally backstage at the Met, there's sets everywhere. And oh my God bad floor and just <laughs> chaos always. <laughs> oh my gosh, but that's incredible. On stage, it's amazing. Yeah. We had, I think they said like 75 singers on stage with us and there were 16 of us dancing. So oh it was just a goodness. huge. Oh my goodness, that's called a production. Exactly, huge my production. Oh my gosh, wow, yeah. that's wonderful. So tell me a little bit about um, Exit 12 Dance Company mm -hmm. before we go to our next lovely video yep. that I'm gonna share. So it's been a little over two years that I've been working with Exit 12 Dance Company. Um, our director, Roman Baca, who you had on your radio yes, show. Roman. Hello, Roman, <laughs> wherever you are. Hi there. <laughs> He's a former Marine, and so we do a lot of military-themed stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and when I first started with the company, it was just a couple people getting in the studio. We had a couple shows coming up, but nothing major. Mm -hmm. um, and I really watched it grow, and I've grown with them. So we had our, our first uh, full-length production of just Exit 12 stuff a couple weeks ago, wow. which was fantastic. And we were on NBC News the other night, and Very it's nice. really growing. So it's a great, I'm so honored to be a part of that. So. That's wonderful, mm -hmm. and it has such a great cause and Absolutely. a great mission behind Absolutely. it. So um, we're gonna go to my next video in a moment, but when we come back, I want you to tell us about um, your performance that's coming up mm -hmm. at the Intrepid, mm -hmm. or on the Intrepid, on the Intrepid should I yes. say. <laughs> so uh, this next video that I would like to share with you guys is my coverage of the Ailey Two's City Group Theater season here in New York City. I got to talk with Troy Powell, who is the artistic director designate for the company, taking over now that Sylvia Waters is moving on, and two of the Ailey Two dancers, and it was a pretty incredible experience. So why don't you guys check that out, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Hey there, it's Ashani and Fuko, and I'm here in New York City at the Ailey Studios. And tonight was the Ailey Two Company's studio showing. They have their season coming up at the City Group Theater, and I'm here with the artistic director designate, Mr. Troy Powell. Hello, Mr. Powell. Hi, how are you? Good I'm very good. This is my former Horton teacher also, guys, so yes. I think I inspired one of his pieces tonight, but we're going to talk about that in a second. So um, how are you feeling about the upcoming season at the City Group Theater? Oh, we are feeling so excited. We have been um, working since July. We started our season in July, and then we've been traveling all over. We had a fall tour. We had um, some performances here in New York City. We also had a spring tour, and we've been going to Europe. Uh, as well as doing domestic traveling. How are you feeling now that Miss Waters is going to be transitioning and moving on after 38 years? I, I interviewed her a little while ago and she's excited. Yeah. How are you feeling though? <laughs> it's, 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 it's exciting. Uh, it's bittersweet because we, you know, we hate to see her sort of, you know, step to the side, take a back seat, which she will be doing. And um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to putting my feet in her shoes. Yeah, I think the biggest lesson that I've learned from Sylvia is to really try to maintain your your integrity and, 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 and who you represent and what exactly it is that you represent. Not only representing this organization, but you're representing yourself. So we saw an excerpt from your piece, Reference Point, tonight. Besides me being your inspiration, um, what inspired you to, to choreograph that piece and what is it all about? Well, it's, it's about life. You know, and it's about a journey, and it's, it's definitely about celebration. It doesn't have a lineage, but it has five sections, and each section has its own little story. I always tell my dancers and my students to create their own legacy, you know, especially as young individuals, because you want people to sort of remember who you are as, as a human being. And I think that, um, that is what I want people to remember me 
as a human being first because that's what I learned from Alvin Ailey is humanity through through the art. Foucault here at the Ailey Studios in New York City, and I'm here for Ailey 2's showing for their upcoming season at the City Group Theater. You saw me talk to artistic director designate Mr. Troy Powell, and you've seen my interview with artistic director Sylvia Waters, 38 years. Unbelievable. Now I'm here with two of the company members, Fana and Solomon. So, Fana, you had a beautiful performance this evening. Tell me what it's like. Are you excited for the season coming up? I'm very excited for the season. Um, we have a lot of different pieces to offer. We have new works, we have older works. My favorite location on tour was probably Bermuda, um, as well as LA, Los Angeles. Well, what's it been like working under Sylvia Waters and Troy Powell? It's been a huge blessing. They are excellent mentors in terms of our dancing and our artistic growth and our technique. They take care of us as artists and they really nurture us. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Maybe I can make an appearance, you know, on one of the shows. We'll, we'll work that out. Yeah, if you need like a, a, a double, a body double or something, because we look alike, sort of. No, we don't. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Fana. <laughs> and Solomon, you were fabulous in the performance. It's not the first time you've heard that, so don't try to be humble. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. You were great. What's your experience been like dancing with Ailey, too? I've had the most amazing experience. Two years have gone by really fast. We've been all around the world. Germany, France, Finland, Greece. I can say dancing in my hometown and seeing my family and my friends and the people who drove me to my dance classes and you know, who, who saw me when I didn't know my left from my right, that was amazing for them to see me perform. I, I thought that was my favorite stop mm -hmm. on the tour, um, seeing my mom. <laughs> mom is the reason why you're here. Shout out to mom, shout, shout out to out Solomon's mom. mom. Um, and are you excited for the upcoming season? What's one of your favorite pieces to perform? One of my favorite pieces, well I have two. I love Donald Byrd's shard, and I love Troy Powell's uh, new work, Reference Point. I just have to say, like, this was one of the first professional companies that I was exposed to, and actually seeing people who look like me up on stage okay. was just amazing. Being able to perform, just under the Ailey name has just been a dream come true. Well, thank you guys so much. You were both amazing in tonight's performance. Check out their upcoming season at the Ailey City Group Theater. This is Ailey 2 at the Ailey Studios in New York City. Hey guys, welcome back to Insight New York City Dance. I'm your host, Ashani Mfuko, and we're here with my special guest, professional ballet dancer, Miss Taylor Gordon. Hi. Welcome back, Taylor. Thank you. So let's talk about Exit 12 Dance Company mm -hmm. because you guys are actually performing on the Intrepid. Yes. This is crazy. <laughs> this is exciting it's and it's very, crazy. It Tell is. me about this performance. We did this last year actually as well on Memorial Day weekend and so this is our second year doing it and it's actually on the deck of the boat, way up, way up, <laughs> where the airplanes are actually housed on the deck of it. So it's absolutely amazing and the crowd, it's just the regular people that are coming to the museum uh, mm -hmm. that can walk through our performance and it's amazing because they're right there with us. It's not a stage, it's not right. set apart, no seating, anything. So it's really amazing to perform these kinds of works, really emotional works with the audience right there with us That's in wonderful. the sunlight. And oh, everything. it's gorgeous. It's, it's, it's gorgeous. And I know that um, Roman has a very important mission behind yes. all of his work because Absolutely. he's a veteran mm -hmm. from the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what's it been like working with him? It's been absolutely amazing. You know, my brother just joined the army this past year, and so working on this kind of these kinds of topics really hits home closer to home now yeah. than ever before. And so, it's absolutely amazing to do these works. You know, one work uh, that we're doing next week is called Homecoming, and it's about soldiers coming home from war. And my part at the very end, everyone's soldiers come home, and then my soldier doesn't come home. Oh. And so it's uh, it's a good three minutes of me just be basically acting, not even dancing, just being really emotional and trying to conjure that connection through art and it's amazing for me to, to do that and to be able to have that opportunity to explore artistically some things that other kinds of works, just straight ballet works, wouldn't let me do. So right. it's amazing, yeah. Wow, what a wonderful experience. Yeah. So you guys check that out, Exit 12 Dance Company. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> wonderful. So I want to delve a little <laughs> bit deeper into your background in dance and education mm -hmm. because 
I know when I graduated from high school, mm -hmm. and I was just, I just knew I was going to be an Ailey or Ailey too. <laughs> so it's kind of funny that we were sharing that um, video today. But I had teachers tell me, don't go to college. If you want to be a dancer, do not go to college. Mm -hmm. You need to go to the city, you need to audition, you need to get right into the professional mm -hmm. realm. But my father, first of all, <laughs> and, and even just in my own heart, I knew that I wanted to go to college. Mm -hmm. That like, wasn't even mm -hmm. an option for me not going. So you went to college, graduated early, and then immediately got a master's degree. Mm -hmm. And none of either one of your degrees are in dance. No. One is in communica communications, mm -hmm. and then one is in publishing. Yes. So how did you f kind of figure that all out and then keep the dance as part of it as well? It kind of happened naturally for me. I was young when I graduated from high school as well. I was 16. Wow. And so I felt like I, I definitely wanted to come to New York. I knew that was, that had to happen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but I was, I really felt like I was too young to dance professionally and I wasn't ready technically and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so I came to New York, went to Marymount Manhattan College. That was sort of my in to get into the city. Right. Um, and I was training at Ballet Academy East uptown full time as well on the side and just sort of married the two together constantly, again, running back and forth between things, mm -hmm. dancing the whole time. Um, but for me, I've always, I'm a dork, I love school. <laughs> and I mi You're I miss a nerd, it's okay, now. it's cool to be a nerd. <laughs> I miss school now, but I felt like it was good, um, just mentally and emotionally, to have something separate from dance, mm -hmm. that dance is my life, but it can't be the only thing that decides whether I have a good day or a bad day. Absolutely. It's not healthy to do that, no, as I've not. learned the hard way. Yes. And so having something else to focus on, and even now I have jobs completely unrelated to dance, and most of the time it's just to get through it so that I can go dance, but some days mm -hmm. it's like, ballet was awful today, Hello. I need <laughs> something else to think about. And so for me, it's been really great to have both, and I feel like everything I do now that's not dance related also almost makes me a better dancer because I have an outside perspective and even the skills that I have writing and publicity and all of that I feel like helps the dance companies that I work with. That's wonderful. So yeah. you're bringing some skills and resources to them that they yeah. probably wouldn't have. Yeah. So you've written for Point Magazine, mm -hmm. Dance Teacher Magazine, mm -hmm. Dancer Magazine, mm -hmm. Movement Magazine, mm -hmm. M Life Magazine, mm -hmm. Hello. <laughs> what magazine have you not written for? It's, I don't know. it's crazy. So, what what's your passion for writing? Where does that fit into your life as a dancer? I feel like for me, explaining dance through words helps me almost to understand it better. Dance can be so abstract sometimes, mm -hmm. and even just watching dance, going to see, especially modern and contemporary dance nowadays, it can be so removed from. Uh, the way that audiences can access it, or especially audiences that are not familiar with dance. Right. And so for me, translating what I see into words or what I feel when I'm watching dance into words really helps me to connect more with it, and I feel like I can help other people connect deeper with dance through that. That's beautiful. Oh. You're just such a dynamic <laughs> young woman. Oh my gosh, I'm so proud of you. Oh, like it's, you. it's incredible because as a dance teacher myself, mm -hmm. you know, when my students ask me about having a career in mm -hmm. dance and what's possible, mm -hmm. and even their parents come to me right. and say, Ashani, is this really mm -hmm. feasible mm -hmm. for my child? I want her to get an education. Right. I don't want her to struggle financially. Right. You know, what's, what's the real deal? Mm -hmm. And I think you're a great example of you know, it, it the fact that done. it's, yeah, it's possible. <laughs> it and and it's also important, your education is still important. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I went to school, I was a double major mm -hmm. in dance and Hispanic mm -hmm. studies. So for me, education is right. equally as important as my, as my dancing. Right. And I think what you said about, you know, having that separation in mm -hmm. your life mm -hmm. where you have lots of dance stuff, right. but then you have lots of non-dance right. stuff because otherwise you can go crazy. Yes, absolutely. You can go mad. Like you said, a bad audition, yes. forget about it. You're like... Exactly. <laughs> You need you need yeah. a couple of days, <laughs> couple of days to get yeah. it back together. Absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. so I appreciate that you're pushing through that and and really inspiring a lot of other young women. So, what is your advice now to people like you who are coming into the city mm -hmm. just starting out? You know, what, what's the deal? What would you tell them? I think you have to really be creative and know what your value is and mm. just always remind yourself of that because there are people who will help you and there are people who absolutely will not help you <laughs> and will do everything to work against you. Yeah. Um, and so you have to just constantly remind yourself, you know, you have something to offer. You need to know what that is or find what that is if you don't know what it is just yet mm -hmm. um, and develop that and really bring something to the table that's not just perfect technique or there's so many dancers in New York that are beautiful dancers. You need to have something else mm -hmm. to offer. And so I think finding that for yourself and knowing what it is and staying strong and staying strong to yourself, true to yourself. 
is really important. That is great advice. You're so wise. <laughs> You're so young and so try, wise at the same I time. I love it. But no, I mean, these things are important. I think knowing your value mm -hmm. as a dancer, yes. as an artist in general, but yes. definitely as a dancer, mm -hmm. because we always get the short end of the stick. We always are the ones that aren't getting paid, exactly. or getting paid less, <laughs> or getting some you know mm -hmm. weird situations mm -hmm. going on. And I think if you understand your value, then you can really stand up for yourself exactly. and say, okay, this is what I deserve, this exactly. is what I expect, and I won't settle for less than this. Exactly. And that's how you have to carry yourself mm -hmm. throughout your dance because career. Because if you don't value yourself, nobody else will. That's for sure. That goes for relationships, <laughs> everything, everything. for jobs, for dance, for Absolutely. everything. And, you know, I always kind of preach that um, dancers should really tap into their value mm -hmm. and understand that dancing is not the only skill mm -hmm. that you embody. Like, you, yeah, you're absolutely. a writer, you've written for all of these magazines, mm -hmm. you do lots of different things, mm -hmm. you teach, you do lots of things. Um, tap into your other skills and abilities, at, whether it's inside the dance mm -hmm. realm or outside. Absolutely. Because that's how you'll survive. You have to be resourceful, you have to use all exactly. sorts of, you know, creative ways to, to earn money and also to keep yourself motivated and exactly. inspired. And it just makes you a a fuller person and a fuller artist. I feel like everything in my life that's not dance related helps me dance wise, even if it's not physically there, just to have something else to draw on emotionally mm -hmm. or artistically, energetically, you know. It's important. You're such an inspiration <laughs> too. This was Thank wonderful. You. Thank you so much for being on the show. I appreciate it. You were great. As we go. As we go, as we go.